Hi guys, today I'm going to be going over this boiler system here. This boiler heats two floors including an upstairs and a basement and they're all in floor heating. First I'm going to go over the components and explain the function and purpose of each and then I'm going to go over the sequence of operation and this will hopefully give you a better understanding of how your boiler works and what to do if it actually fails. Let's get started. How a hot water boiler works is that the fluid, usually a water glycol mix within the piping passes through the boiler's heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is basically a series of pipes with fins to increase the amount of surface area to be heated by the boiler's flame. The heat from the flame is transferred into the heat exchanger, which is transferred into the fluid, which then is circulated around the building to heat the residence. This is a feed tank. It adds fluid to the boiler system as needed based on a manually set pressure. This one is set to 14 to 16 PSI. A more common feed system is directly connecting to a cold water feed and using a pressure reducing valve and backflow preventer. If interested, I have a video explaining this other feed system in more detail. The next component in the system is an expansion tank. As the fluid in the system heats up, it expands. Without an expansion tank, the pressure in the system would skyrocket. The air cushion within the tank buffers this expansion and allows for a more consistent pressure within the system. The device above this is an air separator. This style is called an inline air separator or air scoop. It purges air that might be introduced into the system and releases it through an auto air vent. To the right is a combination gauge which helps confirm fluid temperature and pressure. These orange devices are zone valves. The lower one controls fluid flow to the basement's in-floor heating and the upper one controls flow to the main floor's in-floor heating. The zone valves are controlled by their own thermostats located in each zone. If there's a call for heat by one of the thermostats, it sends a signal to the zone valve to open and allow fluid to flow to that zone. This is a safety relief valve and its purpose is to relieve pressure or fluid from the system if the pressure exceeds the rating of the valve. These valves are rated or sized based on the boiler's BTUs and designed operating pressure. This is a low water cutoff and its purpose is to protect the boiler by not allowing it to fire if there is no fluid in the system. It uses a probe to sense if fluid is present. A device that looks similar to a low water cutoff but serves a different purpose is a flow switch. It's a device that doesn't allow the boiler to fire unless the fluid is being circulated. It uses a paddle style switch which is activated by flow. The circulator moves the fluid around the system. This is an EcoCirc by Bell & Gossett which is a pretty neat design which can automatically adjust output based off of pressure. The manifolds or headers distribute fluid to loops in the system which in turn heat zones or certain areas of the residence. The electronic vent damper is a device which closes the venting off when the boiler isn't firing to help with heat loss and increase efficiency. Then will open back up each time before the boiler will fire. A side stream filter is an optional component but is extremely recommended. It will help prolong the life of your boiler system by filtering out grit and metal shavings. Before we get into sequence of operation, I'll just go over some of the more simple checks if your boiler isn't working. First being power, checking for power at the unit, and if none is present, checking the breaker or cycling the power switch. If you're lucky enough to have a smart controller with air codes, reading these codes can be very helpful in pinpointing any issues. Your controller may also have a fuse. Inspect to see if the fuse is burnt if you're having any trouble powering the controls. Ensure the gas is in the on position. The valve handle parallel to the piping is on and perpendicular is off. The gas control knob on the control valve must be in the on position as well for the boiler to fire. This boiler has an electronic ignition, but you may have a standing pilot which requires it to be lit manually. There should be a sticker on the boiler with pilot lighting instructions if needed. The very first safety that has to be proven before anything can take place is the low water cutoff. If there's no fluid in the system, the boiler won't even initiate the firing sequence. Once that is proven, the sequence of operation starts with a call for heat from the thermostat. If any of the safety limit switches are tripped at this point, including this flame rollout switch and this high temperature vent switch, the sequence is stopped. The call for heat from the thermostat sends a signal to the boiler's controller to open up the zone valve for that zone. 
Once the zone valve is fully opened, it closes an end switch, which sends another signal to the boiler's controller, telling it that the zone valve is fully open and to start the circulator. If you have a flow switch, the circulator will move the fluid, pushing the paddle in the flow switch, which sends a signal back to the controller that there is flow and to continue the operation. The controller now sends a signal to the vent damper to open. And once fully open, a signal is sent back to the controller to start ignition. The pilot flame is lit and has to be proven with the flame sensor. Once the pilot flame is proven, it tells the controller that the gas to the main burner can be opened and the sequence is complete. Well guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you found this video educational. I know it was kind of condensed, but to be honest, if I was to go into detail with each component, this video would be hours and hours long and that would be very winded. So if you do have questions, just leave them in the comments below. I will get to them and I will answer them. And like always, if this video helped you out, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.